Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to, to see you this uh, this afternoon. Um, I labeled this particular reflection, let your voice be heard, um, because it's something actually that I was having a conversation with somebody um, earlier today, and it reminded me of, of just a, a handful of things that I've heard over and over again, especially over the last uh, couple weeks. The need for good people to speak up. Um, I think of, there's a movie, well, the premise of the movie, it's not that great of a movie, actually, more it's actually not, not a very good movie at all, but uh, one of the, the, the lines that moves the character forward and what they choose to do is um, the only thing that, that what the only thing that allows evil to succeed is the indifference of good men, um, and the reality that uh, those who are in the right and speak the truth need to speak the truth, uh, even when the truth is is hard to say um, and hard to hear. Um, and the particular context of, of what that conversation was, there's an individual who was being kind of, there was um, some people who liked this individual and some people who didn't like this individual. And, and it was just an observation that I've seen where a lot of times it, when someone is not liked, sometimes it's just a few people, like a minority of people who don't like what someone is saying. Someone, and I'm and particularly in a particular authority, I'm, let's just say for me, example, I'm a priest. Sometimes I say things that are, are not particularly um, easy to hear, you know, and I know that if, and I'm not saying, I'm, I'm giving this as a hypothetical, I've not experienced this, although I, I'm sure, um, I'm sure I will at some point in my priesthood, you know, there's inevitably going to be a homily or two that I throw out there that are, is not going to be handled well, let's say. Um, and I would hate to be removed from the, from, the, from the parish because, you know, a small group of parishioners didn't like what I have to say and ultimately removed me from, from, from being pastor here when a majority of the people actually didn't have anything wrong or bad to say about me, you know? Um, and what, what's my point? That was kind of a, trust me, that is a hypothetical. I'm not, I'm not feeling like that is what's happening to me. Um, I was using that. Let's, let's use an example that's a, a little further away from home. Um, let's say there's an individual or a group of individuals who are in opposition with the um, status quo. Maybe, and let's just say whether it's good or not, good or bad, it's interesting how those who are in opposition of something can often speak the loudest. A small group can speak the loudest and make it sound like the whole is in agreement with them. When in actuality, a, a great number of people um, do not agree with them. Um, and how a small group of individuals with an agenda or with something that is not helpful can move an entire organization in one direction that's not healthy, but they're the only ones talking. They're the only ones... Um, speaking, they have the loudest voice, and what tends to be the mode of operation is that they, they're, they try to silence the voices of all the opposition. Anytime that, that there's a, in history where, a voices are trying are, are are silenced, it tends to be a not healthy converse, not healthy. It's not a healthy mentality. You know, as Catholics, we believe in the truth. But we also believe that truth is going to stand on its own merit. Uh, but we have to speak in order for the truth to be heard. That's the truth. That's the reality. Um, and the only thing, the thing that allows evil 
to gain ground and power and influence is the indifference of good people to talk. Or I might say, say it this way, to say, I have spoken, I have nothing further to say. When in actuality, we have to say the truth and say the truth and say the truth and say it over and over and over and over and, and let the truth have a lo as loud a voice as any lie, if not a loud voice. So that those who, who are seeking truth and seeking what is right and want to do the good thing because they're good at people and they want to know what is right so they can live that right and stand with other people who, have, who share in their values can know that those who share their values are out there and not feel like they're on an island. You know, that's something that I felt, that there are a lot of voices screaming in our culture right now that are telling me that I am this or I am that or I am terrible or I am I'm a bad person because I did this or that or I hold this value or that value. And I, and I want to say, I, no, no. I know who I am and I know what I'm about. I know that I, I worship a God of love, but also a God who's not afraid to crack the whip if he needs to. If cracking the whip will, will help people know that they are not doing something good and healthy. You know, Jesus, the same loving Jesus who died for our sins, who reached out to prostitutes and tax collectors and, the, and the, those who were on the fringe of society to call them into deeper repentance, was the same, the same person who flipped over the money tables in the temple. Because he saw the abomination that was happening in God's house. He's not afraid to be firm with those he loves. But he is loving. And he calls us out so that we can repent of our wrongdoing and our sins. So that we can live virtuous, happy, healthy, and peace-filled lives. I know who I, who I am and I know what I'm about. I am not an evil, an angry, or a bad person. What I believe as a Catholic is not rooted in evil or hatred or anything like that. Good people, people who are rooted in wholesome, values of truth, forgiveness, mercy, and justice, who are rooted in Christ, we have to speak the truth that we know, speak it with our word, with our mouths, as well as with our actions. We need to be witnesses of conversion and repentance and truth of right and wrong. Um, that we know to be true uh, because of our faith, our faith in Christ. Um, we have to speak. We have to talk. We have to engage. Even if people want to say, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, help me understand. Help me understand. If I don't know what your life is about, help me understand. Because I can't love you if I don't know you. Right? So we have to speak. But remember, we, the message of the gospel is to speak truth, but always with love. To speak truth, but with love. To be um, gracious and patient, but we must hold firm in our values, our values in Christ. We cannot let them go. Um, so we combat lies with truth. And we combat hate with love, truth and love. So um, I'm not sure if that flowed the way I wanted it to, but, but either way, let's turn to the source of love and mercy. Let's turn to the source of justice in our life.
um, to give us guidance and direction. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Offering all of these intentions we hold most in our heart for greater healing and conversion of, of our president, of our, of our political leaders, our governor, all political leaders in all levels of government for greater conversion um, in our church of all of our church leaders from the Pope down to the to the to the, the lay person um, the, uh, the people of God for all those who are in need of witness that they will uh, the truth um, compassion but also justice in every aspect for greater devotion to the Eucharist for all those we love and promise to pray for. You expired, Jesus. The source of life gushed forth for souls in the ocean. Mercy opened up, opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there He shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. And on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and a treasure of compassion inexhaustible, Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair or become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle and be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we'll say, God of Jesus. Have mercy on us, Immaculate Heart Mary, pray for us. Mary conceived without sin, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Andrew, St. Francis, Xavier, and all our patron saints, pray for us. Father Cape and all the angels and saints in heaven, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me for today's reflection, <laughs> uh, praying of the chaplet. Um, I'm not sure why the screen was glitching out on us, but that's okay. Um, know that I love you, praying for you. Keep praying for me. Uh, 
pray for our, our president and our government and all of our, our, our country, uh, for healing in our country. Pray for the Pope and the bishops and the priests um, and one another, um, uh, the church and healing and strengthening of the church. Uh, and pray for courage, that we may all be courageous um, to live and to speak the truth um, by what we do and what we, by what we say, for, for the love of God and for neighbor. So God bless you, and I will see you on the next uh, video. Have a good night.